Hello chess fans and welcome to chess 5 and in this video I'm going to show you a game between Vishwanathan Anand versus Ian Pumaniyashi and this game was played a couple of days before and the game is going to be very epic because I think all of you who are watching the video knows who is Vishwanathan Anand because Vishwanathan Anand is like the first grandmaster of India and also have been the world champion yeah, at uh, some point. Um, and if I talk about Ian Nepomniyashi, Ian Nepomniyashi is very young and have been qualified to challenge Magnus Carlsen for the World Championship title. So obviously, the game is going to be very interesting. It's like an experience versus a new experience. Yeah. Uh, so the game is between the game is from the Grand Chess Tour, Croatia Ra Blade Rapid and Blitz 2021. And this game is from the Blitz section. Um, the game is going to be very interesting and you are going to love this game. I believe it. So, let's start without any further ado. So, Vishwanathan Anand with the white pieces and Yan Nepomniyashi with the black pieces. So, let's start. So, in the game we have by Vishwanathan we have one e4 by Vishwanathan Anand. And Yan Nepomniyashi replied with one c5. That's a silly defense, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, she is like, okay, I'm not going to play E5 solid structure. I'm going to attack while playing C5. I'm going to play attacking chess. Yeah, so after playing C5, I Vishwanathan Hand have knight F3. Here we have E6, D4, 3 into D4, knight into D4, knight to C6, knight C3, and here we have A6 by Yanapumniyashi. And here we have knight c6 by Vishwanathan Anand. In this position, white usually plays bishop e2. Perhaps bishop e3 is also possible. And he can castle. And, 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 and there's also one interesting idea which I usually place. In, in Sicilian, I usually place bishop e2, bishop e3, followed by queen d2, long castle. Because when black does short castle, now white gets tempo by playing f3, g4, h4. And white can launch a very deadly attack. That's why I like this position. But Vishwanathan Anand was not in a very complex mode. He wanted a very simple position. He had no complications. So he decided to simply capture the knight on c6. Here we have b into c6. Queen to f3 by Vishwanathan Anand. So okay. Paras by playing q queen f3. First of all, he's pr pressure as putting pressure on the f7 pawn. And the second idea here is Paras white is White is preparing to play perhaps bishop e3, bishop f4, and long castle. Yeah, putting some pressure on the queen. Possible ideas. After playing queen f3, we have d5 by Ian Nepomniyashi. Saying, okay, do you want to trade the pawns? I, I I would be having a very nice pawn structure. Do you want to trade? So after d5, by Vishwanathan Anand played queen to g3 in this position. Very nice move. The idea of playing queen g3 in this position here is... Now the queen and g3 is putting pressure on the g7 pawn. So usually black moves from the bishop on f8 moves from the f8 square by playing bishop g6 knight f6 castle. But in this position now the bishop cannot move from the f8 square because now the queen is attacking the pawn on g7. So very nice approach by Vishwanathan Anand. So after queen g3 we have f5 by Yan Nepomniyashi. He's saying okay I'm going to play a merciful chess. I'm going to attack. I'm yeah, not going to stop my attack. So after f5, we have e into f5. E into f5. A couple of pawn exchange. Here we have bishop to f4 by white. Developing the piece. And also perhaps preparing to long castle. Even bishop d3 short castle is also possible. A very nice idea. Completely fine. So after bishop to f4, we have knight to f6 by Ian Nepomniyashi. Definitely he's developing the pieces and also planning to play knight h4 attacking the bishop as well as the queen so we have bishop to e2 by white covering up the h5 square so that the knight cannot come to h5 square to threaten the queen as well as the bishop so after bishop e2 we have rook to a7 by Ian Pumniyashi. wow what are what is the idea of playing rook a7 the idea of playing rook a7 in this position here is i don't know perhaps there could be many ideas there perhaps could be the but Rook e7 is a very deadly idea. Yeah, putting pressure on the bishop as well as the king. Or even the idea could be perhaps. I don't know, perhaps this can be possible. But 
you end up in your seat waiting for Vishwanath Anand's castle and when Vishwanath Anand is going to castle then he's going to play G5 and after G5 when Bishop will capture the pawn then he's going to play Rook G7 a very deadly attack on the Bishop and the Queen who knows perhaps this can be played in the game so let's check it out so after Rook A7 we have castle by Vishwanath Anand and after castle we have King to f7 by Yana Punyashi. Why King f7? King f7 was a pretty fine move actually. G5 is not working in this position. Uh, but okay, for psychological pressure, perhaps G5 would have been also nice. In the game, King f7 was played. The idea of playing King f7 in this position here is as the king is in the center, there could be many attacks on the king. Perhaps white can play rook e1 threatening the king. Yeah, perhaps by playing bishop h5 and it's a double check. There could be some dangerous attack. That's why by playing king f7, it definitely looks like why black have just destroyed his castle by himself, by moving the king. He can perhaps play at the place of moving the king. He can perhaps play bishop e7 castle, but he cannot because the pawn is hanging on g7. This is, that is the problem. That is the main problem of queen on g3. That's why he played queen, king f7 and now perhaps he is preparing to play now bishop e7. Or perhaps bishop, bishop c5 is also fine, developing the rook and putting the king on h8 in an artificial castle. Okay, so king f7 was played by Yana Pumyashi. And after king f7, we have rook to g1 by Vishwanathan Anand, developing the pieces. Yeah, very, very solid guy. Here we have h6 by black, perhaps planning to play g5, hitting the bishop on f4. There could be some stuff like that. Here we have bishop to e5 by white. Putting pressure on the knight on f6 and the perhaps the plan could be to capture up the knight and then play bishop h5 check. Perhaps there could be some ideas. So here we have g5 by Ian Napomnia. She's saying, okay, I'm not afraid of anything. Let's see what do you have in your stroke. The, the definitely idea, first of all, by pushing the pawn, black is saying, okay, I'm going, I'm coming for attack. The second idea is hey man i'm making a square for my king so that the king can be safe on g7 perhaps there could be some shift. or even the idea could be to play king g8 rook g7 an idea could be a very huge amount of attack who knows let's check it out so after g5 we have rook fe1 by white and by playing this move white is having all pieces developed very nicely let's see what what black is going to do after rook f e1, we have bishop to g7 by black, developing the piece. Bishop f1 by white. Rook to e7. Bishop to d4. Ro rook to e8. Perhaps asking for a rook trade. So we have a rook trade. Queen into e7. Queen to d3. Perhaps putting some pressure on the a6 pawn as well as the pawn on f5. Putting some pressure because okay. White cannot capture any pawn because for, for for now both the pawns are protected by the bishop. So here we have f5 by Ian Pumash is saying okay perhaps there could be some ideas to capture the pawn. So I'm going to push the pawn and also continue my attack. Looks a fine move. Here we have a3 by white, a5 by black, giving no weaknesses to white at all. So here we have knight to a4, perhaps the idea is to play knight to b6, hitting the bishop on c8, or perhaps the idea could be to play bishop c5, hitting the queen on e7. I don't know, let's find out. Here we have bishop g4 by black, hitting the rook on d1 and also developing the pieces all in a very nice square on g4. So we have f3 by white. I, I personally very really like, uh, it's a very nice move. Okay, but by playing f3, white is saying, okay, first of all, I'm hitting a bishop on g4. And second, I'm I'm making a square for my bishop to come on f2. So that the dual functioning and a very nice move. After f3, we have bishop g7 by black. Knight to c5, developing the piece, hitting the bishop on d7. If you have bishop to c8 back, perhaps Nianapumnyashi is saying, okay, I'm not going to give you my light square bishop. Because the light square bishop is just too powerful looking all the light square. Uh, there could be some deadly attacks by playing g4 attacking white king. Let's see. We have queen c3 hitting this knight perhaps in the future. We have g4 by Yanapunyashi attacking. Knight to d3. 
coming for some defense but the idea is to capture the pawn on f4 here we have g into f3 by white uh by black also after g into f3 we have g into f3 by vishwanathan anand a better move in this position was to play queen into c6 capturing up the pawn on c6 the idea is to capture up the pawn on c6 is the idea is that after queen into c6 if black tries to capture up the pawn on g2 then after bishop into g2 you can see it definitely looks like white is looking definitely weak right but no white is definitely not weak in this position because if you look closely white is having tremendous uh, tremendous threats and many threats in this position the idea is to capture up the pawn on d5 first of all the second idea in this position is to Perhaps give a check by playing 95 check and white is just better in this position for now. Okay, so after g into f3, but uh, yeah, Vishwanathan Anand is like, okay, I'm a solid guy. I'm not going into a very complications position. So I'm going to simply capture the pawn on f3. So it's also a fine move, completely fine move. After g into f3, we have knight to d7 by black. Bishop into g7. Wow. It's just like... Yeah, and Apunyashi just gave up the bishop on g7 by moving the knight? No, it's not very soon. But by playing bishop, to, bishop into g7, capturing up the bishop, in this position, many of it, I think many of the players who are watching the video, many of you were thinking, okay, Block is going to play rook g8, right? This was played in the game, and it looks a very nice move, right? A very natural move. The idea here is, if the white cannot move the bishop, because the king is attacked on g1 and white can't even also defend the bishop on g2 uh, bishop on g7 so it's dead right no it's not dead the idea the best move for black in this position to play was to play queen to e3 check the idea of playing queen e3 check here is if white here king is have to play king to g2 he cannot go to h1 because after queen into f3 it's a check and the rook is hanging on d1 so you have to play king to g2 in this position and after king g2 now black is going to play rook g8 after rook e1 hitting the queen on e3 we are going to play rook into g7 check so white goes for capturing up the rook the best move uh, the best move is this according to engine so after king into g7 rook into e3 f into e3 if you count the material the material is even under an equal position and a completely po playable position for both the sides but after bishop into g7 what happened was rook to g8 the most natural move but sadly it was a blunder by yana pumnyashi because by playing rook g8 in the game king h1 was played a better reply would have been bishop to g2 because after playing bishop in bishop bishop to g2 after rook into g7 capturing up the bishop now comes queen to c6 and after something like queen e2 which looks definitely very deadly for white because now the rook is hanging on d1 as well as the bishop is hanging on g2 yeah so definitely it looks dangerous for white so, so in this position there's only single move for white which wins the position for white in this position so i want all of you guys to stop the video and try to find the best move for white in this position and I'll, I'll give you a couple of seconds okay so let's see so all of those who have found queen into d5 congratulations this is the right move and this is the only move which wins for white in this position the idea of playing queen into d5 here is if the first of all the queen the queen is attacking the king so after the king move now white is going to play knight to f2 very nice move by white the knight is protecting the rook on d1 and the queen is no longer attacking the bishop on g2 with the queen as the rook so it's game over for black now but what happened in the game after rook g8 king h1 was played when this was also fine move white is still better after rook into g7 if you have queen to c6 queen to g5 going for a checkmate on g1 so we have bishop h3 the the g1 square is now covered by the rook and the g2 square is covered by the bishop so no checkmate so after playing bishop h3 we have 
knight b6 a very nice a very nice sneaky attack by uh yan up nyashi he's saying okay bishi do you want to capture my bishop so that i'm going to play queen g2 and it's a checkmate so well played but obviously which we are not done and is not going to miss this little tactic so here he played bishop g4 very nice move bishop into g4 f into g4 here we have king g8 by black capturing up the pawn was not a nice move because 95 check and the queen is dead on g4 okay so king g8 was played and now the threat is to capture up the pawn on g4 so here comes knight to f2 by Vishwanathan Anand. Here we have rook to g6 attacking the queen on c6. Queen e8 check. King to h7. Rook to e1. Rook to g7. Here we have b3. Knight to g7 com coming up with the knight so that the knight was doing nothing on b6. So it's better to come up with the knight, attack the pawn, something stuff like that. So after knight to d7, here we have queen to e6 by white, knight to f6 by black, and this was actually blundered by Nyan Nyashi. In this position, he should have played knight to f8, the best move for black in this position. And why this was the best move? Because after queen to e2, it's a fine position. It's equal position for all the whites, it's slightly better, but it's completely playable position. But what happened in the game? Knight to f6 was split and this was a blender because now comes Rook to e5 by Vishwanathan Anand Attacking the queen Here comes queen g6 a forced move and now comes queen f5 by Vishwanathan Anand and Actually, it was a blender a, a better move in this position would have been to play an h3 The idea of playing h3 in this position here is why is saying okay there is no need to hurry i'm going to simply come up with the knight on d3 capturing up the pawn on f4 and slowly i'm going to take the game but vishwanathan has played queen f5 i want to queen trade but and up now she played rook c7 which was a blender he actually in this position he has to trade the queens because of the queen into f5 rook into f5 knight into g4 and after knight trade after white captures the pawn on d5, black is going to push the pawn on f3. So white tries to chop the pawn. Rook f2, c4, rook a2, rook into f3, rook into a3, king g2, king g6. And although white is a pawn up, but as it's a rook end game, so mostly it's a draw. But white is slightly better. But I think uh, Yan of Nashu would be able to convert this position to draw. But this is not what happened in the game. Rook c7 was played at the place of capturing up the queen. After rook c7, it's a blender and it's a winning position for white. Uh, here comes queen into f4, simply capturing up the pawn. Here we have rook into c2, capturing up the pawn. Rook e7 check. King to h8. Rook e6. A dangerous attack on the knight on f6. So king g7 asking for a draw perhaps. So we have h3 by Vishwanathan Anand, which was a blunder in this position. Uh, many blunders, uh, many blunders till now, yeah. At the place of h3, the best move and a clear move would have been to play h4. The idea is very simple. White is planning to play g5, and black cannot stop this threat, and this is completely game over for uh, black. You, you, after capture of the pawn, the knight is pinned, the queen is attacked, it's game over. But h3 was played by Vishwanathan and he missed h4, um, which was not a nice move. Because he can play h4, because the pawn is not attacked on g4, because the pawn is protected by the knight as well as the queen. So it's no, so it's, h3 is not required, h4 was a much nice move. But h3 was played, here we have queen to f7 hitting the rook on e6. Queen to e5 by Vishwanathan Anand, very nice move. Here, Queen to f8 by Yanapam Nyashi. In this position, if Black would have decided to capture up the Knight on f2, now comes Rook to e7, and it's um, Queen lost. So after, okay, Black can't continue the position by capturing up the Rook, and after capture King g6, 
after King G6, all the winning position for white, but okay, playable position at least. But after Queen E5, we have King Queen F8, which was a much bigger blender now. Here comes Rook E7 check, King G8, and here comes a couple of moves. Here we have Queen E6 check by Vishwanathan Anand, King 2 H8, Rook 2 F7, hitting the Queen as well as the Knight. So Black cannot protect the Knight uh, now. So we have Queen into F7, Queen into F7, Rook into F2, King to G1 attacking the Rook on F2. So the Rook have to move. Rook to F4, Queen to G6, and the pawn is now attacked on H6, and Black cannot defend the pawn. So here we have Rook F3, hitting, trying to hit the pawn on B3 as well as the pawn on H3, but it's too late because here comes Queen H, Queen into H6 check, Queen King to G8. Queen to g6 check, king to f8, and after king to g2 in this position, after move number 53, Yana Punyashi with the black pieces resigned the game, and Vishwanathan with the white pieces won the game. Yeah, but in the game, it, it was a very blunder game because many players, both the players missed many moves, which would have given them a better position. Actually, in this position, why Yana Punyashi resigned the game? Because if you see, there is only one square for the rook, which is not uh, so that the rook will not be hanging. But after rook to f4, it's coming. Queen h6, and the queen rook is lost. That's why in this position, if rook moved uh, from the f file, now the knight is hanging, and it's game over for black. So that's why after after king g2, after moving number 53, and yeah, Nash with the black pieces resigned the game, and Vishwanathan Anand with the white pieces won the game defeated the player who have been qualified for the for the world championship title to um, to compete with Magnus Carlsen to have uh, perhaps Jan Nepunash would have won will win the game and he would be the world next world champion who knows so let's see so for now this is about the game between uh, two top players so if you would have liked this game then please like to my video and uh, please subscribe to the channel do not forget to subscribe the channel okay so i will come up with evening videos for you so till then please stay tuned uh, click the notification bell as well so thank you for watching and bye bye